What's up, y'all? My name is Dan. Here I'm talking about United Airlines Transatlantic Network in summer 2022, exploring the transatlantic routes being operated by United this year, aircraft being utilized, and then a bit more detail on European destinations and transatlantic connections by United Partner Airlines. 2022 is going to be a big year for United Airlines in the transatlantic market. It plans to operate around 86 transatlantic routes this summer amounting to a total of 697 weekly flights, so very close to 100 daily transatlantic flights. The main transatlantic hub for United is New York, with 35 routes across the Atlantic and 310 weekly flights. It's the main airport to connect passengers from the United States to Europe, although I'm guessing some connections are also possible from Latin America to Europe. But it's not just European flights out of New York. There are also transatlantic flights to Tel Aviv, Mumbai, and Delhi as well as Johannesburg and Cape Town, which was recently turned from seasonal to year-round. It's also a large hub for Charlotte Lines carriers to connect with the United flights. Washington Dulles is the second largest transatlantic hub for United, 142 flights to 20 destinations in Europe and Africa. There are different domestic connections than there was at Newark. It's a smaller hub, but there are also some transatlantic flights that don't have any flights out of Newark, such as Accra and Lagos, as well as a future of flights to Amman, Jordan. United is also planning on flying to Cape Town from there, but those flights haven't been approved yet. While several Star Alliance carriers fly there as well. Chicago O'Hare has 105 transatlantic flights per week to 14 destinations, including flights to India and Tel Aviv. But it has more domestic connections to the Midwest and the western side of the country that New York and Washington Dallas don't fly to. And similarly, other Star Alliance carriers fly to Chicago as well. San Francisco connects the west side of the U.S. to six destinations in Europe plus Tel Aviv too with 63 flights per week. There are flights from there to India, but those are counted as trans-Pacific flights rather than transatlantic. Partner airlines such as Lufthansa, SAS, Swiss, TAP Air Portugal, and Turkish Airlines also fly there. Houston Intercontinental with four destinations in London, Frankfurt, Amsterdam and Munich and five daily flights including two daily to London with connections mainly in Texas and the southwestern US and Mexico. Lufthansa and Turkish Airlines also have flights to Houston. Denver offers flights to London Heathrow, Frankfurt and Munich with four daily flights including two of them to London Heathrow. This airport has plenty of connections to the western US, and Lufthansa is the only Star Alliance airline that operates transatlantic flights to Denver as of now. Now, the last two flights are from Los Angeles to London Heathrow and Boston to London Heathrow, both being once daily, and largely dependent on local demand. The aircraft being utilized for United's transatlantic flights include the Boeing 737 MAX 8 that will be used for flights from Newark to Ponta Delgada in the Azores Islands. The Boeing 757-200 would be used on lower demand routes in Western Europe such as Shannon, Bergen, Tenerife and Reykjavik from Newark, or Madrid, Lisbon and London Heathrow from Washington, or Reykjavik, Edinburgh and Dublin from Chicago. The Boeing 767-300ER on high J configuration are used on the most premium routes between New York, Washington, Dallas, Chicago and Boston to London Heathrow as well as flights from Washington to Zurich and New York to Zurich, Geneva and Frankfurt. The normal Boeing 767-300ER will be used on some lower demand routes, mainly out of New York and Chicago, such as New York to Dubrovnik, Berlin, Madrid or Lisbon, Chicago to Amsterdam, Paris or Rome, or Washington to Amsterdam and from Houston to Munich, among others. The 767-400ER would be used on a few routes from the East Coast, such as New York to Barcelona, Athens or Venice, and Washington to Barcelona or Rome. The 787-8s for the longer routes would lower demand, such as Washington to Amman, Accra, Athens, Lagos and Tel Aviv, as well as Chicago to Milan and Tel Aviv. The 787-9 would be used for the average longer routes, mainly from the West Coast, but also a few from the East such as New York to South Africa, Chicago to Frankfurt, Delhi and Munich, San Francisco to Amsterdam, Munich and Tel Aviv, all of Denver's flights as well as Los Angeles to London. The 787-10 would be used for some busy routes, all of them from New York to Amsterdam, Frankfurt and Paris. The 777-300ER would be used for some busier routes, mainly from the hubs in Houston, Washington, Dallas, and San Francisco, and Newark. The 777-300ER would be used for a few routes, but these are the longest busier routes, mainly to India and Tel Aviv from Newark, as well as San Francisco to Frankfurt. United's main route is going to be from New York to London Heathrow, with seven daily frequencies, all operated by the high j 167 seater Boeing 767-300ER, this being the most premium aircraft that United 
has with more premium seats. United also has flights from another seven airports to London, including Washington Dulles, Chicago O'Hare, Houston Intercontinental, Denver, San Francisco, LAX, and Boston. United also flies to other airports in Europe. The secondary airport United flies to is Lufthansa's hub, Frankfurt. United flies there from six of their hubs, from New York, Chicago, Washington Dulles, San Francisco, Denver, and Houston. Added to that is the 18 destinations from Frankfurt to the U.S. operated by United's joint venture partners Lufthansa, including United's hubs, as well as Boston, New York, JFK, Miami, Philadelphia, Austin, and others, as well as the recently launched St. Louis flights. With all these flights, passengers can connect onto other flights from the rest of Europe and beyond. United also flies to Munich, which isn't as big as Frankfurt, but it's quite a big hub regardless, with 12 destinations in the U.S. with Lufthansa and United combined while Lufthansa allows connections from Munich to other parts of Europe and beyond. Other members of the Lufthansa group also work along with the United's transatlantic connectivity with Brussels Airlines hub in Brussels that connects to other places in Europe, but also some African destinations that Lufthansa doesn't fly to. Swiss increases connectivity in Europe via the Zurich hub, basically as an alternative to the Frankfurt hub, added to the fact that it's a big financial hub. United doesn't fly to Vienna, but Austrian Airlines flies to United hubs and connects passengers in Vienna to a lot of destinations that Lufthansa doesn't fly to, especially in Eastern Europe. Other airlines that are part of Star Alliance also offer transatlantic flights to the US. TAP Air Portugal offers connections in Southwestern Europe and Western Africa via its hub in Lisbon, while also having flights from Porto to the US. Scandinavian Airlines does the same in Northern Europe via Copenhagen, Stockholm, and Oslo. While Polish has hub in Warsaw, Lush connects Poland and Eastern Europe, including the large Polish and Eastern European diaspora in the US. Lot also has flights from Krakow and New York to Chicago, as well as Rzeszów to New York and Budapest to New York. Turkish Airlines similarly uses the Istanbul hub to connect passengers between their 10 US destinations to small Middle Eastern and Central Asian cities, and sometimes to African and European cities that don't offer many connections. United also flies to Athens, Asian Airlines hub, where passengers can connect to other tourist destinations in the area. Egypt Air only flies to two U.S. cities, but it connects passengers via Cairo, especially in the Middle East and Africa. Ethiopian Airlines flights are mostly one-stop flights via Dublin or Lome, but they connect passengers via Addis Ababa to destinations all over the continent that very few airlines fly to. United connects to South African Airways and Aerling at Cape Town and Johannesburg to a lot of destinations in the southern part of the continent, especially Aerling being the regional operator that flies short-haul flights from South Africa while South African Airways is in shambles. And lastly, there's India, with several flights from Chicago, New York, New York, JFK, and Washington to Delhi, Mumbai, and Hyderabad. Some of them operated by Air India, some by United, which quite helps connect the two countries despite being really far away. On the other side from San Francisco, flights to India tend to be transatlantic flights because of San Francisco's location. I would also assume that Air India uses other European hubs to connect with flights to the US on either US or European airlines. All the cities that are on Star Alliance hubs also have quite some United presence, such as Amsterdam, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Rome, Madrid, Dublin, and Tel Aviv while other airports such as Dubrovnik, Berlin, Reykjavik, Accra, and others that have fewer United flights in comparison, but they are still very important flights as they increase connectivity from these airports to the US. And that is all the connectivity offered by United Airlines and its partners. It's quite exciting to see transatlantic demand coming back to 2019 levels this summer. Hopefully in the future there will be more growth in the market by United and other airlines as well. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If y'all got any feedback, questions, or any comments, y'all can leave a comment. That's all I got to say, and I'll see y'all later.